Hey there guys, this is Sam and Justin at the Survival Review and today we are going to be talking about S Psycho 4, Psycho the 4. beginning. The beginning, what a the, the half se half sequel, half prequel movie. Yeah. Because it is. Like. It, it, it actually <laughs> is half sequel, half prequel. Also, <clears throat> I just thought I'd give a little Psycho history. In between Psycho 3 and 4, um, Psycho 3 kind of bombed at the box office. No. So they <laughs> decided to go to television and make a TV show um, called called Bates Motel. Bates Motel. Not the new show, nope. but this show, it's not in continuity with the movies because Psycho 4 ignores it, obviously. Because in the show, Norman Bates dies in the mental hospital, and he um, gives gives the motel over to his like uh, roommate or whatever, cellmate or whatever. I haven't seen it. It's just, it's just what I'm going was it, off, I'm going was it off of. Anthony Perkins? No, they had a no. different guy playing him. Oh. Like, they had like Anthony Perkins stunt double playing him. Oh. But um, it was only a brief shot, so he was barely in it. And so um, so that guy takes over as as the caretaker of the base motel, and like weird things start happening. I've heard that the show couldn't find a good tone if it was like supernatural or like a Twilight Zone esque type thing. It didn't get past the pilot episode. Oh, seriously? Yeah, it only got a pilot episode. Oh. And, and I've heard it's bad, and I haven't seen it, but just a little fact. And then after that, they made Psycho 4, which was a TV movie on Showtime, though. So it has more production value to yeah. it. It doesn't feel too much. It only feels like it because it's very small. And there's not many locations. Yeah, but didn't necessarily need a lot of locations. No, I didn't. But that's kind of, I think that's why it was a TV movie. Yeah. I gave it. Okay. So, so, so you want to talk about the plot? Why not? So, it takes place like years after, at least a few years after Psycho 3, and apparently Norman Bates is out of the mental institution. <laughs> Yet again. again. <laughs> They're like, oh, he's fine now. He's And over. he's living in this nice house, and they explain later what, what it is. Um, he, um, he is married, yeah. and he calls up, there's this radio program going on, and they're talking about uh, matricide, the, like when sons kill their mothers and stuff like that, and he calls in just to tell a story, because he's killed before and he's going to have to do it again. And so you see the back... <laughs> that's, that's the line. So you see the backstory of Norman Bates and how when he was a kid at the base motel and how he was with his mom all the way up until when he poisons his mom and stuff like that. Yes. Well, his mom and this other guy. Like, yeah. Uh, the, it, it, it's not just like a quick flashback. It goes into depth. Yeah, that's the whole movie, the pretty that, much. Yeah. With and occasional cutbacks to yeah. Anthony Perkins talking. She, he, he, him and his mom are alone in the thing, and then this guy, uh, Chet, I think. Something like that. that. <laughs> he, his he mom should. meets this guy, and they run the... Yeah, so it explains and, that. And then in the end, there's a little bit of a sequel, where it... Ex oh, I got... I don't know, just say what happens. Yeah, I guess... Whatever. No, spoiler alert. Nobody really cares, but nobody it ends, really up, cares it ends up that, uh, that Norman Bates wants to kill his wife because his wife got pregnant and he thinks he that thinks, his kid's yeah. gonna become crazy and he doesn't want to produce another monster. Yes. Yeah, so the ending involves him like kind of going after not yeah. not really but kind of. So he takes his wife, doesn't the, he takes her back to the a psycho house, yeah. the base motel, and there's a little climax there. Yeah. And so it's, that's why it's a kind of half sequel, half prequel, mostly prequel. Yeah. But so, so the uh, performances. I say they're all solid. Yeah, not, there's nothing really bad. Uh, uh, and uh, Anthony Perkins doesn't get much to do. Not a but lot. he's good, I guess, with yeah. what he does. Um, the and actress who plays his mom, I thought was really good. Yeah, she was good. And the uh, actor who plays young Norman Bates, who is uh, Elliot from E.T. Yeah. He's good. Yep, he was actually pretty good. good. I thought all the flashback stuff were all, it's all really well done. It's just my main problem with the movie is that I think it should have focused all on the flashbacks. Yeah, it really should have and just making that sort of plot with him and his wife killing his wife. It it just seemed a little my, unnecessary. Yeah. Like like my idea would would have been to if you wanna put Anthony Perkins in the movie, maybe have like have him still be in the mental hospital like the end of Psycho Three, because it's a little ridiculous that he got out. <laughs> but have like maybe somebody's interviewing him or something and then he starts telling a story. Yeah. So he can like book end the movie. That's my opinion of what they should have done. So you still get you still get to put in Anthony Perkins, but you get to flesh out the flashbacks. So cause whenever, whenever I rewatch the movie, I always I always never realize until I'm rewatching that like the flashbacks aren't really fleshed out too well. 
because they're all like quick and you need to have time for the other for the main for the uh, sequel story to happen. So that's kind of annoying. And it just sort of felt like you were trying to pay attention to two different stories in yeah. one movie, and it it just kind of felt clustered. Yeah. Also, some of the ideas were like the the placing of flashbacks I thought was a little strange. Yeah. Because the way they do it, they try to save the uh, mother death until like the ending of the movie. That's like the big climax, which I see where they're getting that. But then they like the first flashback is a scene of him killing this girl after he's already killed his mother and started dressing up yeah, like her. everything is... So the timeline just feels off and then opening flashback. You're just like, so this is after everything. And then they go back to when he was a little kid. And then they're still developing his story with him and his mother. And then there's one more flashback where he's killing somebody later on. Yeah. And then those two death scenes just felt like we need death scenes in this movie. Because mm -hmm. that first death scene happens really early on. So I just feel like they needed death scenes. So they just kind of threw them in these spots. And it would have been cool if it was just like one narrative story about him, his relationship with his mother, then him ending up killing her, and then having a little bit afterwards with him sewing up the body and everything. Because yeah. you see him sewing up the body in the flashback before he kills her. Because they save that till the end. And I thought that was a little kind of confusing. Yeah. At first. Like, I never understood that first flashback. Like, why are you showing that now? Yeah, it's, it's really <laughs> weird the order they decided to show the things but in. But for the most part, though, like, because we all are saying right now, if we were just bashing the movie. Yeah. It, this flashback stuff is well done. Yeah. And it's, not, it's actually really entertaining. Mostly yeah, flashbacks. I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was an interesting way to go with the series. Yeah, it was cool. It was actually part. cool to see that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it didn't, it didn't, it pretty much did explain things, but it didn't, like, explain it, like, overly explain it. So there's still more intrigue to it. And, oh, and, and a side note, they, this is the first Psycho sequel, and for only Psycho sequel, they actually used the original score. So oh, yeah. Can, that's cool, hearing the original theme and everything. Psycho 2 movie don't have the Psycho theme in it. It's really weird when you think about it. It is. So it has, and also had the screenwriter from the first Psycho writing it. That I did not know. Which is cool. That is pretty cool. And one also random fact, when the movie premiered on Showtime, they premiered it right after like a restored version of the original Psycho, and it was hosted by Janet Lee. Oh, that's so cool. Then, yeah. So they try, they really try to tie it back in with the first movie a lot, yeah. instead of going the crazy direction that Psycho 3 went in. So, I like that. It's, a little, it's not as insane. It's not gory. No, it, not There's really. a little bit of blood here and there. And the, and the mother death scene is, is actually really awesome. Yeah, it, it is pretty screwed <laughs> I thought, That was really well done, though. Yeah. I, really, I really like that scene. So, overall, like it's a mixed bag. Yeah, it definitely is. Overall, um, I'd say I, personally, he, he probably disagrees. I'm thinking I mean, about it. <laughs> I personally enjoy this movie a little bit more than Psycho 3. I, I actually, I really liked Psycho 4 when I first saw it, but on recent rewatches, it kind of gets less and less interesting. I don't know, maybe it's because I've already seen the flashback or I know, like, what's going on and stuff. It's not as intriguing, but, I don't know, Psycho 3 just has too much weirdness going on for me to not <laughs> enjoy it. I don't know, it's... It's really hard. This is going to be the hard part yeah, of the I, video. I just feel like this one had more of a story. Yeah, it did have more of a story. It had more um, interesting... Like, the plot going forward was more intriguing. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe not the stuff with Norman Bates going to kill again and the, no, people, but... in the people in the radio station trying to figure out if it's Norman Bates or not. And yeah. That was a little kind of like, eh. Another yeah. nod, the, the like, psychiatrist who's in the radio scene. That was the guy from the... Not the same actor, but the char same character from the final scene of Psycho. So, so like I said, they do, they do tie it back with the first movie, which is nice. They they don't overuse the references to the first yeah. movie. They do a decent amount, which is nice. Yeah, it's just an overall. It's worth. It's like Psycho Three, I guess. It's worth checking out at least once. Yeah. But I feel this one. This one I feel is a little bit more forgettable. Definitely. That's why I say. Well, that's why I don't know. If three I, has those memorable, interesting moments. And a weak and plot. This, yeah, and this and one this has, one has one a has better a... plot, but less memorable moments. Exactly. The best scene is the mother death. I say. Oh yeah. That was a really cool scene. Definitely. Crazy. So um, out of ten. Out of ten, I give it a five. Five. Uh, slightly better than the four point five I gave. Um, three. I'm gonna give the movie a five point five. Just. Slightly under Psycho 3. So that's that's Psycho 4. That's the Psycho fr series, which a lot of people probably had no idea was even existed. Yeah. And But it's not the last Psycho movie that was made. No, there they was. They did do a remake. 
And you know what? For the price of one, we're going to give you two reviews. Oh, yeah. We're going to review the Psycho Remake right All now. Alright, Psycho Remake. Go. Uh, it's exactly the same as the first one, shot for shot, except a couple of very unnecessary it's, parts. It's crap, 2 out of 10. It's also crap, 2 out of 10. There we go. So there we go, we got two reviews. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. And, uh... So that's, uh, that's, so we're done with the Psycho series. And after this, we're going to review other cool horror stuff. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we'll, we'll figure something out. And, uh, that's about all we got to talk about for mm -hmm. now. And, uh... We will see you guys later. Mm -hmm.